Hey everybody, welcome back. This week I'm talking to you about the hottest comics releasing June 2nd, 2021. Please be sure to subscribe, like the video, comment down below. Let me know what you're most excited for this weekend. I got a lot of really good top picks this week, so let's just dive right in. We're starting off with Basilisk, number one. Um, new Boom comic written by Cullen Bunn, drawn by Jonah Scarf. If you haven't seen my video on why I think you should pick this up, I definitely think you should watch that video. I think this is going to be a really hot comic. I think it's going to be a really great comic, and I just feel like it's going to be like one of the most uh, least anticipated comics. I think it's going to be off people's radars, but I definitely have this one on mine. <laughs> so... Who can stop the Chimera? Five individuals bound by a cult-like hive, they terrorize small towns with their horrifying supernatural sense-based powers leaving death and destruction in their wake. Regan, one of the Chimera, escaped and has been in hiding with her murderous eyes bound overcome with guilt. Until now, when a victim from her past forces her to hunt down the other four of her kind. And it's described as a supernatural horror series for fans of Philadelphia and Stillwater rooted in the way we process the world, our senses. So, I love Philadelphia. I love Stillwater. I'm excited that they compared this to that because I just love a really good horror comic and it dives de deep within like our senses you know sight smell here and I really enjoy that and I'm very excited to see how this plays out also this week DC Horror presents The Conjuring The Lover number one it's a mini series out of five parts and this one really interested me when they first got solicited because um, DC Horror presents it's not Black Label, it's a new own subgenre, which I think is very cool. I'm very excited. Um, and this one is written by David L. Johnson, Rex Oogle, and Scott Snyder, which is very cool. It's also drawn by Gary Brown, Dave Johnson, and Dennis Callaway. And the covers are really great. I really enjoy them. Um, yeah, pretty much very excited for this. Uh, Gary Brown is probably one of my uh, underground artists that I really like. He has drawn baby teeth. And I really wanted to see more from him. So I'm very excited he's getting an opportunity to do something DC and not just independent. So this is the terrifying debut of the tie-in to The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. Uh, with a story that's bursting at the seams with clues about the new film. Meet Jessica. Jessica just returned to her freshman year of college after winter break, bringing her the anxieties of last semester's poor grades, the awkwardness of facing a boy she wishes she never slept with, and an undeniable, unnerving feeling of being watched. She soon comes to realize that evil, something evil made her its target, and it will not rest until it has her in an unholy grip. But why did the sinister presence sight its sights on a seemingly normal college freshman? So very cool. I like the movie covers like always. I think like the VHS classic style is really cool and creepy and I'm excited to see how this one goes and plays out. Another big, big uh, top pick for me this week is Nice House on the Lake number one. It's a maxi series. Uh, it's out of 12 parts written by James Tynan IV and drawn by Alvaro Martinez Bueno, which... I don't know too many things from him, uh, so I'm excited because this art looks really good. So I'm excited to see how Tynan and this artist play off of each other. Uh, so everyone who was invited to the house knows Walter. Well, they know him a little. Anyway, some met him in childhood, some met him months ago, and Walter's always been a little off. But after the hardest years of their lives, nobody was going to turn down Walter's invitation to an astonishingly beautiful house in the woods overlooking an enormous lake. It's beautiful, it's opulent, it's private, so a week of putting up with Walter's weird little schemes and nicknames in exchange for the vacation of a lifetime? Why not? All of them were at the moment in their lives when they could feel themselves pulling away from other friends, wouldn't a chance to be reconnected be nice? Uh, and there's some fantastic covers on this one. I really love the cover A, but the cover B is done by the Department of Truth artist Martin Simmons, and the 1 in 25 is done by the Something's Killing the Children artist, uh, Weather Del Rara, and I, I can't wait for this comic. This is under DC Black Label and not under DC Horror, which I find interesting because you would think since it is James Tynan's own story and they would want him to do his own things that they would put this one under the DC Horror, not the Black Label. 
not too sure how those two uh, are going to intertwine. If they'll intertwine, I'm not too sure. All I know is I'm pumped for this comic. <laughs> also, Star Wars War Bounty Hunters begins for number one. Uh, we got that alpha one, and it was really good. Um, Boba Fett was very cool. I loved his costume. I thought it was very fun. It was a nice, fast-paced breather, and that's what I like in my events. In my events, I like it to be fun. Charles Soule is a huge Star Wars nerd, so having him just be able to dive into his own world and his own Star Wars universe is really great and I really like it. So at the War of the Greatest Prize of All, Han Solo, the hunt begins. Nobody steals from Boba Fett. The notorious bounty hunter will not stop until he gets what's rightfully his. For the thief, no corner of the galaxy is safe. Good thing for them that the Rebel Alliance, the Empire, and every bounty hunter in the galaxy is standing in Boba's way. So very cool. This event is going to last all the way through October with a bunch of tie-ins, but I'm not going to let that bring me down because I am on for this ride, and I think it'll be a really fun one and a really great one to sell. Uh, it should have a really great collection in your uh, polls as well, in your boxes, so... I love these covers. One of my favorites is the trading card cover. It is a 1 in 25, but if you can get your hands on any of these, I highly recommend picking it up. Now time for our series shoutouts. These are not my top picks, but they are definitely ones I think you should be on the lookout for. Uh, ones that I am pretty much interested in as well. So, Batman Fortnite Zero Point number 4. Uh, this has been selling fantastically at all comic book stores around the world. Uh, getting that code, you know, is pretty great, and it's exciting for having new kids come in and be able to pick up their very first comics, uh, and I just think it's really cool. Batman has broken free from the loop and the endless cycle of combat, now free to explore the island without limitation. The world's greatest detective will discover secrets about the world of Fortnite never before revealed in the game or anywhere else. Just one thing, he's not alone. Uh, and so this one, there should be plenty out there. Do not pay those high prices on eBay. It is not worth it. We were able to adjust our numbers for this issue. So starting from this issue on, there should be plenty at your local comic book store. So please go and support them and pick up this comic. Also, Batman The Adventures continues Season 2, number 1. Uh, season 1 did great, and it's very fun to have a Batman the Animated Series type comic come into this play and I just love seeing all the classic old school Bruce Tim inspired outfits, designs, characters, things like that. So Gotham is changing. After Mayor Hill is killed by a mysterious assailant, Batman finds himself tracking down an ancient order that's long been buried under the streets of Gotham, the Court of Owls. But what does this group have to gain from the death of Mayor Hill and how can Dead Man help the Dark Knight? I really like the Court of Owls. I think Talons are really cool and really fun and I'm excited to see that in this universe as well. Also, Firepower number 12. Okay, so this one is the end of the story arc. It's celebrating one full year of Firepower already. I'm so excited and happy for Firepower. I think it's a great comic. Robert Kirkman's killing the game right now. You know, with Invincible coming out, I sell more Invincible now than I have ever sold in my entire time working at the comic book store. So, I mean, it's huge. He's really big. I've always sold, like, Walking Dead and things like that, but Firepower now is starting to take... A lot of uh, excitement and heat and because I mean what could Robert Kirkman make a next great show about and firepower has that potential it has that kung fu martial arts aspect to it and I just really love it this one in particular has a bunch of covers since it is a big issue it's a big oversized issue uh so what a wild ride it's been and everything has been leading to this moment the scorched earth clan and the order of the flaming fist face off one final time owen johnson has fully re-entered the world he left behind and from this point on everything changes this oversized issue is not to be missed and i'm highly emphasizing that because there is covers from todd mcfarlane Frank Miller, Rob Liefeld, you know, uh, Simone DiMaio, they're, they're, Tula Lo Lotoya, like, there's just so many covers for this, and so many big names, Eric Larson's one of them, I mean, 
I cannot keep up with how many covers there are and how many great artists they have for it. So, I mean, pick your favorite, pick them all. Uh, it might be a little harder to get some of these uh, later ones. But, you know, I I'm telling you, this comic is going to be one to look out for, I believe. Also up, I'm going to include the Hellfire Galas, X-Force 20, Marauders 21, and Hellions 12 all together. Uh, so pretty much this is the start of the Hellfire Gala. And I have this in here because, one, I really like their costumes. I think it's a really great fashion design choice, especially that Cruella just came out recently. Uh, she's dealing with like her own fashion designs and what she looks like and things like that. Where now the X-Men have their own uh, super extravagant outfits, and I, I really like that. But also, they have mentioned that there is going to be real-life celebrity guest appearances in these comics, such as, like, Eminem. And I believe whatever comic, we don't know which one that is, whichever one has Eminem in it is probably going to be really hot. <laughs> I mean, and you don't even know which one that's going to be. You can either wait and find out later on when they start raising the prices or you can just get them all and hopefully you get the winner. Um, but I really like the connecting Russell Dodderman ones. I think that really cool like red carpet is really interesting. I also like the Russell Dodderman 1 in 50 uh, design characters because I think those are phenomenal. But those are going to be really hard to get because uh, like my store we don't really sell too much x-men so i only ordered about 25 of each of them so the 1 in 50s are a bit of a stretch and they might be very expensive but i mean if x-men's your theme and you want to collect those i highly recommend picking those up okay on to our late printings now we got a couple this week we have alien number two second print we have carnage black white and blood number two second print magic the gathering number two second print noctera number two third print noctera number three second print and you can also grab noctera number four this week which i'm very excited and looking for there is that beautiful Jenny Frizen cover. It's so gorgeous. Um, Shadecraft number one third print. Shadecraft number two second print. Way of X number one second print. And last but not least, You Promised Me Darkness number one second print. I know a lot of you were looking forward to that and if you weren't able to get your hands on it, highly recommend picking up that second print. Hopefully your local comic book store pre-ordered it. I know I did because I saw a lot of people interested in this comic and so I ordered a little heavier on this one just so everybody gets their fair chance and that's going to be all for my picks this week uh, just this plenty plenty of more comics releasing this week trust me coming june 2nd 2021 please be sure to pick up all of these or check them out at least at your local comic book shop and be sure to have a great day and a great week have a good one